Okay, that's a pretty good height. Okay, I'm using DVDs to prop up this camera. Hi, friends. Welcome back to my channel. That's not your intro. Well, this sticker on this is really bothering me. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm G. If you don't know me, I hope you're here to learn more about me. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Um, I missed you. I didn't. I haven't done a sit down video in quite some time. I've been doing vlogs so much lately, which I love, but it's also been like sad because I don't get to like sit here and just talk to you guys. Um, whenever I do sit down videos like this, it just makes you think of like old school YouTube, and it makes me like happy because that's when I actually fell in love with YouTube was like all the old school videos of like doing my makeup or all that kind of stuff. Anyway. Um, as you can tell by the title of this video, that's like one of my favorite phrases ever. Um, we are going to talk about dental hygiene stuff. So I have a couple videos coming at you that I'm actually going to be filming are in. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. Just needed to respond because I take, um, another licensing exam tomorrow. I need to switch the battery. It's about to die. Hi friends. I'm back. Okay. I ate lunch. I'm here. I'm ready to giggle and have a conversation. Okay. So the first video that I promised you was what I did to study for national boards. So I put up vlogs of me studying for national boards, but I don't think I really explained what I did or like the process. Um, really, truly, I think that this starts with picking the correct dental hygiene program for you. Um, I really think that choosing the hardest dental hygiene program is what's gonna prepare you the best for boards, point blank simple answer is that because the earlier you put in work with having to learn material the easier it'll come to you when you start studying for boards does that make sense so if you're putting in a lot of effort with like the classes that you're taking and the material that you're learning it's going to come a lot easier once it's time to study so choosing the most rigorous program is probably the easiest way to get started way earlier than anticipated. And then when it comes to actually studying, you don't have to as much as somebody in another position would. Anyway, with that being said, I used Andy RDH, um, Andy's RDH, I guess I should say. So this is a program that it's a study review program, if you will. So you get a book with this program and it has every single like topic or section of boards that will be on it. And my book is actually in my car and I don't want to get it right now because I just don't want to walk over to the car to grab it. I'm a little lazy when it comes to that sometimes. If it's like in the car, I'm like, ugh, I'll just get it tomorrow or something. Anyway, so there's, there's multiple options with this program and no, I'm not being paid by like Andy's RDH, which honestly I probably should be. Um, and I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not being sent anything. I didn't get my program for free in exchange for like talking about it. Um, I paid full price. I actually paid for the most expensive option and I'm glad that I did. So there's different, there's different options for what you pay for, um, different like tiers, if you will. They have an in-person seminar is what I'm getting at. So they do like, I think it's like a four day review. You're there from like 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. for like four days straight and they cover everything so it's like lectures back to back to back to back on different subjects so like one morning you'll start with i really don't even know the schedule but i'll give you an example so let's say you're there the first day so like for a two two hour block you're doing perio and then for a two hour block you're doing pharmacology and then for another two hour block you're doing clinic and then and then you're doing research and then so forth like that's how it keeps going and like you're reviewing with a certain person who's lecturing for two hours and um you just keep going until you go through all of the material now with that being said, I don't know that they do this everywhere. I know that they do one in Texas. I know that they do one in Chicago, I believe. And then I think somewhere on the West Coast, but I don't think they do it like in every single state. But if you can get yourself to Andy's RDH, if you can pay for the program, I would say that this is the best option. Um, I know that there are different things out there for you to study with, but or different programs to use. But honestly, like I just think you're wasting your time and your money if you're not using this program because it covers literally everything. There was not one thing on test day that I hadn't already seen either in school or in Andy's review thing. So my program really prepared me really, really, really well to where I even thought some of the classes that I took in hygiene school, like some of the exams that I took in hygiene school were way harder than my board exam. Um, I would actually say that for the majority of my classes, our exams were harder than our board exams. So it prepared me really well in that way. Um, but anyway, for it, as for Andy's like in-person seminar, 
it usually happens like that first week of January and this was my last year being in school and I knew that that was the last time I was going to get a Christmas break for a very long time probably. Um, and I didn't want to sacrifice that. I really didn't want to sacrifice my time off. The last year of hygiene school, specifically the last two semesters, are rough. They're really, really, really rough and they put you through the ringer emotionally, mentally, physically in every way capable and I didn't want to give up more of my break time so I did not do the in-person seminar a bunch of my classmates did I believe there were like 12 or 15 of them that did the in-person I believe there's like a web seminar that you can do too like it's the in-person one but they like they stream it and you can just do it at home essentially instead of going to the program every single day I didn't do this because I knew that this was not how I learn. I can't focus this way. I can't be doing something for an extended period of time and actually be expected to focus the entire time. I can't do that. I don't focus for long periods of time like that. My brain doesn't function that way. I just can't. I have to do it in smaller chunks. I've always known that about myself. So I did not do that. At first I did kind of feel like I might've missed out doing that, but I didn't at all because I bought the most expensive option. And I believe it was like something like, I think it was like $420. I, I think it was like 420 or something like that. I can't remember the exact pricing, but it was expensive, but it was worth every single penny. It really truly was. And I know that hygiene school is already expensive enough and you have to pay for your licensing exams and your board exams and all the extra things that come along with it. But I'm telling you that if you just want to take boards one time, this is it. The people teaching these classes are either dental hygienists or these seminars are either dental hygienists or professors who teach in these in these fields and are experts in those fields. So they're very good about like deciding what's on certain tests. And I believe they've all taken like national um dental hygiene board exams like I believe they all have to take it in order to like be part of Andes I'm not 100% sure but the program is incredible they tell you what to focus on they tell you the things that they've seen on the exams in years past and they're not lying they were spot on there were certain things that I was like oh yeah they told us this would be on there and it was on there um I memorized that book back to front front to back either way whichever way I I studied it for I think I started in like January, I want to say, and I took my test March 22nd. So obviously, um, I don't think they would let us take it any sooner than that. Like my school, my program, like obviously you can take it whenever that's really a you decision, but they were like, we really, originally like years ago, I think like two years ago, no, last year, they had the first class take boards before spring break. So before March like 10th or something. And prior to that, they wouldn't allow us to take it before March. I believe they made us take it in April to make sure that we had enough time to study. But I felt like I had more than enough time to study. I felt like I was fine. So I started in like late January. I think it was like the 19th or something is when I started. And I would study slowly. Every single day I would listen to a different seminar and do like the section in the book on that and review that. So I'd highlight it, I'd go through it every single night and then I'd kind of go through that every day and I'd just repeat material over and over until the week of spring break. So I took my boards the week after spring break after just like an experience if you will. So the testing center, I was supposed to take my board exam before spring break so that I could have spring break off but the testing center that I originally booked at made a mistake so I had to end up rebooking for after um it went it ended up being fine I was okay there really wasn't any issue um but I studied that entire week at home and you guys saw that I posted those vlogs I the entire week I was at home studying um did I take breaks yes did I have weekends where I didn't study yes did I have not that spring break weekend not that spring break week because it was like study the whole time but Prior to that, there were weekends I didn't study. There were days where I was too tired to study. There were not weeks, but there were days where I didn't study because I was so exhausted or I had other projects I needed to focus on at school. But I will say that the thing that helped me the most was taking practice questions or practice tests and practice quizzes and answering all the information in question form. So Andy's has like an app online or an app for your phone that you can also download. And there's like a bunch of quizzes and a bunch of practice tests on that as well. And the online stuff had like mock board exams, I think like two or three. And that really helped me. So that last week I was reviewing a bunch of stuff, but I was also taking so many practice tests. And truly that is the way that I find 
most people find success in taking whatever exams they're taking is is practice questions and practice tests because it helps you with time management and it helps you think of the material faster um so if you can do that that is my suggestion to you there's also a book that our program suggested to us for the um what's it called the scenario based questions the, the case studies i believe so there are case studies towards the the end of your exam um and those are probably like the harder questions I guess because they are questions that are like patient based so like you have x patient they have all these problems they have all these situations these are the medications they're taking this is their chief complaint but these are their x-rays so we took a class in hygiene school and I don't think every hygiene school has this class or like it's not structured the way ours is so we take theory two which is basically where we learn all the different diseases this different systemic diseases so the diseases of the body, like not just your mouth, like every disease process that occurs on, in a human, we learn in that class. And we take exams that are essentially to prepare us for board. So they were really long exams. And it was almost as if our professor who created that class, like copied and pasted like the case-based questions from boards and put them in her class. Um, they were hard and they were grueling, but we made it through. And when it came to taking boards, I was like, oh, like I've done this before, I've seen this before, I know exactly what I'm doing here. The trick to those case-based questions or the case, the scenario, whatever, however they're called, I can't remember like the specific word for them, case studies, there you go. The trick to those is finding the most demanding problem at hand and attacking that first. So if a patient has uncontrolled hypertension and you see that, that is what you attack first. And if you see that a patient has uncontrolled diabetes, that is what you attack first. If you see that a patient has um like periodontal disease out the wazoo but like they're just here for your cleaning that is what you attack first so that's kind of what we were taught in school but also obviously through board review um again andy's rdh i can't recommend it enough this video is really short because it's just to the fact it's not there's not much more than that if you're in dental hygiene school and you're, or you're preparing to take your boards you've got this you can do this you have everything within yourself to succeed here and pass this test i believe in you you can do this don't doubt yourself don't forget to get some sleep because that's very important and i'll talk to you guys later i hope this video helped you guys i hope something good happens to you after you watch this video and i'll talk to you guys later bye